News MK. In this tribute video, we came to bring a list of famous celebrities who passed away today, October 22, 2023 and also in previous days. Along with this, we bring special tributes to all these legends who contributed in some way to their respective works. One of the greatest American actors has died. Our beloved John Amos, sorry. We send our prayers to fans and family. Before we continue, we kindly ask that you show your love and affection by giving this video a thumbs up, and if you are new here, subscribe to the channel to follow the next videos. Number 1, Samantha Wall. Unfortunately, the president of the board of the Isaac Agree Downtown Synagogue, 40-year-old Samantha Wall was found dead on the morning of this Sunday, October 22. According to information, she was found dead with multiple stab wounds outside her home, in Detroit, in the United States. We are shocked and saddened to learn of the unexpected death of Samantha Wall, our board president, the establishment said in a social media post. May her memory be a blessing. Officers received a call this morning about a person lying on the ground unresponsive, and when they arrived at the scene, they found a trail of blood leading them to Wall's home, according to a statement from the Detroit Police Department. They believe the crime occurred inside her home. Authorities found Wall's body with multiple stab wounds and she was pronounced dead at the scene, authorities said. The city's mayor, Mike Duggan, said Wall's death has left a huge hole in the Detroit community. In a statement, Duggan said he and Wall were celebrating together at the newly renovated synagogue just a few weeks ago. It was a project that she led with great pride and enthusiasm, Duggan said. This entire city joins his family and friends in mourning his tragic death. Wall had previously worked with Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin, according to a social media post by Slotkin. She said Wall dedicated her short life to building understanding between religions, bringing light in the face of darkness. Very sad. Sure she really was very young, we send sincere condolences to friends, fans, and family. May she rest in peace. Number 2, Betsy Rawls. Unfortunately, professional golfer Betsy Rawls passed away this Sunday morning, October 22, at the age of 95. She was the winner of 55 LPGA Tour titles and one of only two women to win four U.S. Women's Opens. When Betsy Rawls finished her studies at the University of Texas, she had a choice. After news of Rawls passing broke Saturday night, fellow LPGA great Nancy Lopez was one of the first to offer condolences on Twitter. Very sad to hear of Betsy Rawls passing, Lopez said, 48 times LPGA winner. She was a great champion and a player who supported my career. She was always so kind. Rest in peace Betsy. I hope you're shooting below average at the sky, warned. Although Rawls had his intentions, fate had other ideas. Despite wanting to begin a promising career in physics, Rawls was invited by Wilson Sports Goods to conduct golf clinics to promote the company and its products. Rawls was LPGA Tour Secretary that season, beginning a long tenure for her in LPGA leadership. She served as President of the LPGA from 1961 to 1962 and after her retirement in 1975, and a total of eight major championships, for U.S. Opens, two LPGA Championships, two Western Opens, she became Tournament Director. From 1987 to 2004, Rawls was Tournament Director for the LPGA Championship, now known as the KPMG Women's PGA Championship. We send sincere condolences to friends, fans, and family. Goodbye. Number 3, Sir Bobby Charlton. Sir Bobby Charlton, 
one of the biggest names in English and world football, died this Sunday morning at the age of 86. He became very famous at Manchester United, he was world champion in 1966, England's only world title. It is with great sadness that we share the news that Sir Bobby passed away peacefully in the early hours of Saturday morning. He was surrounded by his family, the note says. In 2020, the former player was diagnosed with dementia. His older brother and fellow English football idol, Jack Charlton, died that year after suffering from the same problem and fighting lymphoma for years. Charlton is the name of one of the stadium's stands and there is a statue near Manchester United's home. United spoke out about the loss of one of their greatest names in history. Manchester United is mourning the passing of Sir Bobby Charlton, one of the greatest and most beloved players in our club's history, says the club. Bobby Charlton played every minute of England's 1966 world title campaign, scoring three goals, two of them in the semi-final against Portugal. His death leaves Jeff Hurst, who scored three goals in that year's final against Germany, as the only Englishman who was on the field in the final still alive. The English idol had a great relationship and was revered by another icon of world football, King Pelé. Charlton was also in the 1958, 1962 and 1970 World Cups. He was the England team's top scorer until September 2015. He is currently the third, with 49 goals, behind Kane, 61, and Rooney, 53. The English idol leaves behind his wife. Lady Norma, his daughter Suzanne and Andrea, and three grandchildren. Sorry, we send sincere condolences to the family at this sorry moment. Number 4, Carlos Amram. The journalistic community woke up to sadness this Sunday 22, with news of the death of journalist Carlos Roberto Amram da Silva at the age of 71. The journalist and communicator was admitted to the AC Camargo Oncological Hospital in Sao Paulo. Carlos Roberto Amram served as director of Fantastico on TV Globo between 1991 and 1992. He played an important role in the history of the now-extinct TV Manchete, in which he was the founder of the newspaper and served as director of the journalism program's division. With a searching instinct, Amram developed an important role in society. He was a special reporter at Journal O Globo, editor-in-chief of Globo Reporter, editor-in-chief of Journal de Globo and Journal Hoji, director of journalism at Globo in Rio and Sao Paulo, and in addition, he was director of special events at Central Globo de Jornalismo. The communicator worked at Reed Bandarantes de Comunicaco, where he implemented the Band News News Channel. At Reed Record, he was the creator of Domingo Espectacular. Amram also passed through SBT. With an established career, Amram won several awards during his career. In 1994, he won the Djibouti with the book Commando Vermal Hawaii Historia do Crime Organized, in addition to the Simon Bolivar and Vladimir Herzog Awards. Condolences to the family. The journalist will definitely be missed so much. Rest in peace warrior. Guys, let's go now to last minute updates, involving Remenado and very dear actor, John Amos. Do you enjoy your movies on television guys? And from 0 to 10, what rating do you give to the veteran? Tell me in the comments, it's very important. Well guys, 83 year old actor John Amos wants people to know that he is doing well, despite reports saying otherwise. The 83-year-old Roots and Good Times star is currently hospitalized in Tennessee, according to her publicist, Belinda Foster. Amos shared a statement with CNN through her last Friday. To all my fans, I want you to know that I'm okay. 
I'm not in the ICU nor have I ever fought for my life, said the veteran. Last month, authorities in Colorado, where Amos has a home, said they had opened an investigation into an allegation that the actor was being abused by an unidentified caregiver after his daughter, Shannon Amos, reported her concerns to local authorities. On this day, I would receive a distressing call from my father, telling me that he was hospitalized in Memphis, Tennessee, in immense pain. Despite being out of the country, I got help to reach him. The ICU revealed that his life was hanging in the balance wrote Shannon Amos on Instagram last week, said the actor who continued. The last two weeks have destroyed our world. My father, a victim of elder abuse and financial exploitation. We are collaborating with the Colorado Department of Investigation and local authorities, determined to bring the perpetrators to justice. Legal assistance is crucial to securing his prosecution and protecting my father's future. His house, stripped bare, needs a safe space for his return. The Custer County Sheriff's Office is investigating the report, Colorado Bureau of Investigation spokeswoman Lisa Colbrenner told CNN in a statement. We take allegations of crimes very seriously. We can confirm that an allegation was made to the Custer County Sheriff's Office that Mr. Amos may be the victim of a crime. We are thoroughly investigating this allegation and have consulted with our partners at the Bureau of Investigation and the Colorado Department of Human Services. We have also contacted Mr. Amos and his attorney, the statement read. While Colorado does not have a specific charge titled elder abuse, related crimes can include criminal negligence, assault, robbery, theft and more, according to Cole Brenner. Cole Brenner declined to offer additional information about the status of the investigation, but no charges have been filed in the case. We want to send our best wishes to Mr. Amos and hope he has a speedy recovery, she added. Shannon Amos has started a GoFundMe with the goal of raising $500,000 to be entrusted to her father's special fund dedicated exclusively to his care, legal fees, and aftercare. In his statement to CNN, John Amos said he did not want the fundraising. I want the GoFundMe campaign about me to stop immediately and for the funds to be subsequently returned to those who donated, Amos said. My son and I will reveal more information at the appropriate time. We are rooting for your full recovery. Who believes, say amen. Number 5, Cindy Montañez. The famous San Fernando political pioneer and environmental defender, Cindy Montañez, 49 years old, died this Saturday, October 21. It is with inconsolable sorrow and deep sadness that we announce the passing of Councilwoman Cindy Montañez, current CEO of Tree People and former member of the California State Assembly. Cindy will be remembered as a fierce advocate and advocate for environmental justice throughout California. To her family, Cindy will always be a loving daughter, sister, aunt and great aunt, and she will be greatly missed. The family requests that their privacy be respected at this difficult time. Details about the memorial service and funeral will be shared as they become available, San Fernando officials launched. The cause of death was not reported, but Montañez was recently diagnosed with aggressive terminal cancer. Montañez was the youngest person elected to the San Fernando City Council in 1999, at age 25, and the youngest woman elected to the California State Legislature at age 28 in 2002. In August, the Los Angeles City Council unanimously renamed Pacoima Wash Natural Park to Cindy Montañez Natural Park. The Los Angeles County Democratic Party released a statement mourning Montañez, calling her a trailblazer who broke numerous glass ceilings. His enduring legacy of advocating for environmental justice, climate change and housing will resonate for generations to come, the statement said. Our hearts are with his family and may his influence endure with strength and purpose. Condolences to the family of the deer who unfortunately lost her life. Rest in peace.
Number 6, Edward Blyer. The world of media and technology lost a big name this week. This is because, the American television executive and also president of Warner Brothers, Edward Blay, 94 years old, died this Friday, October 20th. Ed's career spanned television and electronic media for ABC, Warner Communications, and Time Warner. In 1968, Ed was a U.S. representative of British and European programming. Ed was president of Warner Brothers Pay TV, cable and network features from 1969 to 2005. In 2003, Ed published the New York Times bestseller The Thanksgiving Ceremony, featuring a ceremony around the table celebrating the non-denominational holiday. In the 1960s, Ed was a senior executive at ABC TV, responsible for daytime and children's programming in sales, general sales and marketing management, public relations and strategic planning. He is survived by his wife of 50 years, Magda Palachi Blyer, and nephews Henry Chase Bleckman, Philip Edward Bleckman, and nieces Julie Moise and Deborah Palachi. Sorry. We send our sincere conditions. May he rest in peace, goodbye.